Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Great to have you here on this Saturday, if you're listening in real time. Our first house call of the weekend, we are going to answer our community's questions. You know that's exactly what we do each and every weekend, Saturdays and Sundays for the past five years. So hopefully you've been tuning in. And if you haven't, and you have a health-based condition right now, and you're looking to resolve it, what I would do is I would go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts, and I would type in your keyword. Your keyword might be something like um, blue light, or it might be insomnia, or it might be Addison's, or it might be Hashimoto's, like whatever it is, type it in and look at all the podcasts where I've talked about that before. So it's a great place to just get started to first start. And then of course, if you can work back on previous podcasts and you'll be able to get more depth of information. Remember, the reason why I do this podcast on a daily basis is because it's impossible to understand the correct answer without having context behind it. It's why most people are never going to get well from a single book, a single article, a single research you know, uh, study. It's because you need to know what you're up against from the inside out. And so what we try to do on the, on the podcast is talk about it from this perspective and that perspective and, and why some things work for some people and not for others. And so that's just really what it's all about. And, and then of course, these weekend shows are dedicated, uh, to helping our community and answering their questions. So without further ado, let's answer some questions. All right. The first uh, question today is from Rachel. Hey, Dr. C. I was wondering if you could discuss bone cavitations in the jaw. I found one episode, 16, six, or sorry, uh, 660, where you briefly described and discussed it, but I was wondering if you had any more info on them and their implications on overall health, as I feel they're pretty important and relevant. I recently started seeing a biological dentist, and he did a cone beam scan after we discussed my health and found I have four cavitations where my wisdom teeth would have been. I never had wisdom teeth, and he said this is where the follicles were that didn't develop for whatever reason, usually nutrient deficiencies as a child. My mouth is otherwise very healthy. I'm scheduled to have the procedure to clean them out and begin to heal my bone on 615. I'm currently on week six of the CBO protocol, and I'm going right into the mold protocol after as I present with SIBO and mold toxicity. I'm wondering if it would be better to schedule it before the mold protocol or keep it set to after I'm finishing everything. I know you wouldn't give medical advice, but I'm asking for your professional opinion for what you would do. Any insight is greatly appreciated. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I'm happy to answer this question for you. I would simply go and have the procedure done and I'd be doing the CBO and mold protocol at the same time because to be honest, uh, the mold protocol and CBO protocol have such great, powerful, um, what's the, what's the, what's the proper way I have to say this blood cleansing herbs such as oregano and thyme and clove that will be very helpful in the overall healing process. Okay. So talk more about cavitations. Sure. So cavitations can happen with any type of oral-based procedure. Wisdom teeth taken out is very common. Root canals, very common. What happens is you're actually, so in Rachel's case, she actually didn't develop wisdom teeth, and, teeth, and that, that's, that's fairly rare. Um, but a lot of people have their wisdom teeth extracted. That just means taken out. I had my wisdom teeth plus two other teeth taken out when I was younger to make space for all of these big teeth I have in my mouth. I've got big kaffa teeth. <laughs> so if you're watching that on video, you can see how big they are. And, um, and my mouth was not big enough for these big kaffa teeth. And so and why, I wouldn't get into why that was for many generations of you know, nutritional deficiencies and the elongation of my skull and the narrowing of my jaw. Plus, I was a mouth breather, so my tongue did not stay against the roof of my mouth when I was a baby and a toddler and a child, which means that my palate was not wide enough for all my teeth to come in. That's why very, you know, nasal breathing is so important. Um, 
versus mouth breathing. But again, you know, my parents were not aware of this and, and, uh, and sometimes there's not a lot you can do. Like there really isn't, um, this is generational. So we, we all hope to be eating better, uh, for the next generation. And, and we hope to help heal through genetics and epigenetics. So, but let's talk about cavitations. So when you have it removed, um, what happens is the gum begins to grow over what was taken out in the, the jaw and the jaw is actually the bone. And what can happen is bacteria can begin to develop. And it's an important part of looking at that. So this is obviously very deep. I've given many, I actually just, I believe two weeks ago or maybe even a week ago, I gave a book called, um, I think it was called Biological Dentistry. Uh, let's see here if it was. Well, uh, you'll look back at uh, stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and, uh, and you can see the book that I recommended. Uh, by Mark Briner, I believe, and uh, a great book. And so when you look at this, the bacteria can build up. Now, the bacteria is actually now growing under the gums. What happens is that bacteria then goes directly into your bloodstream, and it can begin to infect, well, your entire body and any part of your body. So it can show up as immune issues, autoimmune issues, psoriasis, skin issues, brain fog, et cetera. So this is why it's important to look at that. Um, if you've ever had a root canal, uh, if your wisdom teeth were extracted, you ever had any tooth extractions, it's a good idea to work with a biological dentist to see if there is any bacteria growing under there, especially if you have chronic sinus infections or pain in the face or even TMJ. Very, very good thing to look at. So uh, Rachel, hopefully that was helpful. Ben's up next. Hi, Dr. Rawl. Huge fan. Listen daily for years now. Thanks for all you do. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate that. Uh, I have a question. I've repeatedly noticed if I drink any kind of herbal tea, including ginger and peppermint in the daytime, I sleep poorly that night. I will wake up in the middle of the night and be up for an hour or two. None of these teas have caffeine at all. I've also noticed the same thing when I take more than 5,000 IUs of vitamin D. Have you heard of herbal tea or too much vitamin D uh, keeping people awake? I'm especially cur curious about the non-caffeinated herbal tea. It's so confusing. Many thanks, Ben. All right, Ben. Um, in, in a way, yes. So always with vitamin D, and that's why I recommend taking your vitamin D in the morning. So I've, I've talked about this for uh, quite some time. I talk about it inside of IHP, if you're an IHP as well, that you take your vitamin D supplementation in the morning. Vitamin D supplementation actually gives you a little boost in energy, and that can help. Uh, that can be in one regard because it makes your blood a little bit more calcium retentive. Uh, but also, that's why it's important to take magnesium in during the day because that helps then give the calcium a home, right? So the magnesium helps the calcium get into the bones. So, and then it also balances the sympathetic nervous system. So that's your vitamin D answer. Take take it in the morning, and uh, most likely, you know, you're you're me reaching your upper limit of vitamin D. Most adults, it's four to five thousand I use a day. Okay, so now what about the herbal teas? That's a strange one, right? Ginger, peppermint tea. Why why would those keep someone up? Because there is no caffeine. You're right, like not even a little. You know, decaf coffee has about thirteen milligrams of caffeine, so there's still a little bit of caffeine, but not herbal teas. There's no caffeine in herbal tea. So because it's not really tea. That's that's the funny thing is like herbal teas aren't really tea. Uh, they're herbs that have been steeped in hot water, but there's no tea leaf uh, per se. So the reason could be histamines. So histamines can actually drive in a nervous system uh, based response. So histamines can drive norepinephrine and adrenaline. And so that's the reason you're most likely having a histamine based reaction to these dried herbs. So dried. Now remember dried herbs aged, anything aged can have a higher level of histamines. So just think about fermented, aged, and um, why, why is that not off the top of my, tip of my tongue? Aged, fermented, and oh, it's going to bother me so much if I can't think of it. Aged, fermented, and not spiced. Mm, it'll come to me. I apologize. But go back and you can check out my podcast on histamines and you'll see that sometimes the uh, the brain lapses while, while this is live. So that's most likely the reason. But the nice thing is you'll probably find one that you're not sensitive to. So it's most likely, you know, the ones right now that you're, you're sensitive to, but you might be able to try another one that, that works for you or uh, try a hibiscus. Hibiscus seems to work for quite a number of people. So try hibiscus. You can also try fresh versus dried. Uh, that will help, you know, in terms of histamine. So like fresh ginger might help. Uh, and again, you can do that with hibiscus as well. So try that out and, uh, see if that works. Uh, Ben. All right. 
Patrick's up next. Hey, Dr. Brawl. Hope all is well. I'm thinking of switching gyms for now since all the saunas are closed still. The gym I'm thinking of joining has a stand-up red light therapy booth. I heard your podcast a few weeks ago saying you're all for red light therapy, but could standing in a booth be too much? Thanks and keep up the great work. All right, let's see if I can dissect this answer. So Patrick, you're going to a gym. Uh, I think you're switching because one has a sauna and this one has stand-up a red light therapy. And you're saying... Could standing in a booth be too much? No, I don't think so at all. Uh, a booth would red light all around you, would even be more effective, and you'd have to be in for less time. So typically, when you're doing a red light therapy, you need to be in front of it for 10 to 20 minutes if you're just doing one side. But if you're doing both sides, then 10 minutes, you're good. Like You're literally good to go. And so I think that would be great. And if you can buy a package and it makes it uh, like cost-effective, then I think that can be absolutely fantastic. So Patrick, all about it. And if you're able to, what I would do, uh, it doesn't honestly matter whether you do your sauna before red light therapy or red light therapy before your sauna. It really doesn't. If I had a preference, I would do red light first, then sauna. But honestly, we're drawing straws uh, at that point because you're doing such a great thing for yourself. Okay. Next up is Terry. Terry says, hello, Dr. Ball. I have followed your work for over five years and I'm currently studying to receive my IHP level two. There are no words to express my gratitude for the impact you've had in my life. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Uh, Terry goes on to say, I recently ran the hormone and stress test. My estrogen, progesterone, and DHEA levels were all in the low range, but my testosterone was higher at uh, around a 49. I'm 49 years old, relatively fit, close to the ideal body weight, have good energy, and overall health. I just started supplementing with Vitex. I would like to add DHEA, but I'm concerned about the high levels of testosterone. Why would my testosterone be high when all my other hormones are low? Thank you in advance for your time, Terry. All right. So Terry's uh, referring to our stress and hormones test over at equi.life. And Terry, um, the only thing you didn't give me was information on your cortisol levels. So in PITA-based women, it could be any woman, so I'm not going to like just generalize, but mainly in PITA-based women, um, they, when they get stressed, they have higher, they can have higher levels of, uh, testosterone. And that's one reason. So the way that we usually do this is that we work on stress with magnesium and adrenal soothe and, of course, uh, meditation and binaural beats and walking and, and all the lifestyle things as well. But we use adrenal soothe and magnesium for that. And if um, we estrogen is low and progesterone is low and DHEA is low, then sometimes we'll use DHEA for 5 milligrams and 5 milligrams. And then if there's no increase in acne or hair growth or oiliness of the skin or increased aggression, then we're good. But if those symptoms start to increase, then we'll, we'll actually take the DHEA out. And then of course, if you want to get really scientific about it, um, you'll do this protocol for 12 weeks and then you'll stay on it. And then you'll do your, uh, your lab test, which is another one of these labs, the stress hormones one, and you'll be able to see for sure. But most likely the way that you're going to raise your uh, estrogen and progesterone, Vitex is good. But remember, inside of IHP level two, uh, we don't recommend Vitex alone. Vitex is also called Chase Tree Berry. It's fantastic for progesterone. There's no doubt about it. Um, but we like to use the other uh, herbs as well to boost progesterone, such as wild yams, etc. So you can check that out. That's over at Equal Life as well. But again, it's a good product, so I have nothing against it. We use it as well. Uh, so hopefully that helps. Again, you'll be able to go by symptoms and you'll be able to use additional products to help control that stress response. And, um, and that would be the adrenal soothe and magnesium as well. And then of course you can use liquid melatonin at night to reduce cortisol levels at night. So Terry, hopefully that's helpful. Happy to do a follow-up as well. If you're an IHP, you can also ask uh, your questions each month when we do our live IHP calls. All right, Sarah's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I'm um, dealing with and struggling with CIU for six months now and cannot accept idiopathic as an answer. There has to be a root cause. Okay, so for people who don't know what CIU is, it's chronic idiopathic urticaria, which is just an ego medical conventional medicine term for you get hives and nobody has any idea why. 
That's what it means. Chronic, which means long, over six weeks. Idiopathic, which means nobody has any idea where it's coming from. And urticaria just means hives or welts or wheels on the skin. So again, that's conventional medicine liking to, liking, uh, to sound smart. And so they come up with a big name for what they don't know. Uh, but luckily in natural health, we do know. We do know why these things are caused. And um, I certainly had chronic idiopathic urticaria myself uh, with the w- just debilitating allergies. And that's why I feel for anybody with terrible allergies and asthma, um, you know, especially the seasonal ones that just, they can't leave the house. So let's get to your question, Sarah. Delayed, uh, she gets delayed pressure hives, exercise induced hives, random hives, even when sleeping, also flushing of one ear and cheek and eyelids, uh, blood flow looks great. Okay. Let's see what else is going on. Um, Okay, normal results for W for white blood cells, uh, normal differential AST, thyroid peroxidase, thyroglobulin, antibodies, ALT, alkaline phosphatase, C-reactive protein, sed rate, and um, no Lyme, all that. Eat a normal diet. Uh, lots of foods are high in histamines. Okay, so even though I tried low histamine diet for a few weeks, it had zero impact. I asked my doctor if there would be any gut issues that I need to resolve, but she did not think so. That's the problem. Uh, I added Kimu powder, B vitamins, D3, low histamine probiotic to my diet to see if there'd be any benefits. We shall see. I would be grateful to hear any ideas you may have. All right, so let, let's get right into it. Okay, so 90% of the time, this is a gut issue that then affects the immune system. Okay. So it's stress and gut. There's no doubt about it. So you've shifted into what's called a TH2, typically TH2 dominated immune system. And again, I have a podcast on TH2 immunity. If you haven't heard of that before, uh, definitely check that out. So what does all this mean? Well, it means this. When your gut is permeable, you eat foods, you spill proteins and bacteria and yeast and whatever else is in your intestines in your bloodstream. That aggravates your immune cells because those things were meant to be kept in your intestines, not on the outside in the bloodstream. So that drives the immune system crazy. You've got chronically elevated levels of, um, I mean, at least an IgA or IgM or IgG immune cells leading to these these hives. And every time you eat, it's essentially an onslaught or again, it can be, this can be environmental mediated as well. So how do you get rid of all this, right? How is it, how does it, how do you get rid of all of it? Well, it's all about the rain barrel. So I know that you eliminated your higher histamine foods for a couple of weeks, which is great, but your rain barrel takes more time to empty and it will empty faster. Uh, when you begin to, you, you, I mean, in my opinion, if I were you, I would run the, um, candida metabolic and vitamins test along with the food sensitivity test, along with the bacteria and parasite stool test. Okay. That's what I would run the three gut tests because you're most likely going to find some yeast and candida overgrowth, some bacterial imbalances, maybe even some H pylori, maybe a parasite. So That's what I would do. Um, And then I would go about removing whatever you find. Then I would go about repopulating, not just taking a probiotic yet. And then I would reseal the gut and that's going to dramatically empty your rain barrel. And then in the meantime, of course, you know, you're going to reduce your higher histamine events, uh, high heat. Again, you're taking Kimu Kimu powder, which is extremely high in histamines. It's nice for vitamin C, but people with high histamines right now actually do better with alkalizing vitamin C than they do a food-based vitamin C. And that's because a food-based vitamin C, although phenomenal, typically comes from citrus and, um, it, and that's very high in histamines. So again, there are just very, there are many levels to this and I'm sure whoever you're working with uh, is fantastic, but they sound like they're coming from more of a conventional medicine standpoint and you, you really do need an integrative health practitioner. And that's what I recommend. So you can run the labs right through Equi.life, uh, or you can find your local integrative health practitioner to help you on this journey. All right. But you'll get there. No doubt about it. You will get there, Sarah. All right. Anonymous is up next. Last question of the day. Uh, hi, Dr. Rawl. I discovered your podcast through an online nutrition and fitness program that I joined, which you happen to be on the board of. I'm having great success with my fat loss, my energy levels, and sleep. Your daily podcast has been a big part of my morning routine and self-care for at least five months now. So thank you for being great. Thank you, Anonymous. Uh, sometimes I have to admit you are a little above my head with some of the terminology and science, but for the most part, I've learned part I've learned so much information that has helped me 
make even better healthy choices for myself and my family. I recently purchased some supplements from your website in order to reach the minimum amount required to receive a free lab. I was so excited to begin investing in the labs because this is not something I've done before. I just want to be as healthy as possible for this point in my life. I was looking at uh, the shipping for the state and seeing if there's uh, any possibility to get them pushed through. What is the reason that you you do not ship to my state? I trust you so much and I would love to see the labs you mentioned daily. Okay, so uh, happy to help with this question. Uh, we actually ship the uh, minerals and metals test, if that's the free lab that you're talking about. We ship that to all 50 states. So just keep in mind, uh, we don't own any labs. So I just want you to know that. Uh, I'm a board certified doctor of naturopathy, which means I can sign off on your labs to because you have to have a doctor sign off on your labs, and I can ship them anywhere that legally allows me to. Okay, but we are not legally allowed to ship some labs to the state of New York and the state of Rhode Island. So we can't do that legally. Like we're not allowed to because you can't ship it back from those states. So we just are governed by the FDA, right? And so that's what we have to do. But the minerals and metals test, that free minerals and metals test, uh, is actually able to be shipped to any state. So I just want you to know that. And anytime you have an issue, just email in to support at equa.life. Uh, they will make sure that they take care of you. We respond same day. I mean, literally, we've even hired someone on the West Coast to be able to work later um, on East Coast time. So we're committed 100% to you. And, uh, and of course, we would love to be able to help you in any way. Just keep in mind, we don't create the laws. We would love to create the laws, but we don't create the laws. Um, so we, we, can't, we can't force a lab into the state of New York. Nobody can. Um, and we can't force it into Rhode Island as well. So uh, we do appreciate you. We, we very much appreciate you as part of our community. We would love to help in any way that we can. And um, you might have to work with someone locally in those states if you can get it done. So again, we always do our best for you, but we can only do our best. That's it. So we do hope you understand. All right. That is it for questions for today. I'll be back with six more tomorrow uh, on our second house call of the weekend. Take care, everyone. Have an amazing weekend. Thanks so much for tuning into the show. And before you go this week, coming off of our functional medicine detox, I want to make sure that you are set up for success for the next 12 weeks. This is why we are offering 20% off for life. That means 20% off each and every month, two of our most popular protocols. That is the daily foundation protocol level two or level three. And that is your daily nutritional support your 22 organic fruits and vegetables in the daily fruit and vegetable blend, your omega-3s, your daily probiotic, and if you do level three, your daily digestive enzyme. That means you're gonna be covered. You're gonna get all of your vitamins, all of your minerals, you're going to get your detox factors, you are going to get your 15 grams of hypoallergenic vegan-based protein with all the amino acids in it. You're gonna be getting 22 different fruits and vegetables every day in that greens or rainbow colored powder. Uh, you are also gonna be getting the omega-3s that you need to keep your body healthy and with balanced levels of inflammation. You're going to be getting your 50 billion low histamine probiotics on a daily basis, plus that daily digestive enzyme to help you break down your food that much better and reduce the bloating. So that is our daily foundation protocol, level two or level three. I do level three every single day. I don't miss a day. If I'm doing a fun breakfast on the weekend. I still do my daily foundation protocol level three. I get those nutrients every single day. It's my fail safe to keep my body healthy and strong and energetic. And for those people looking to up the fat burning potential of their body, you definitely want to check out our fatlocity system. It is the first ever day and night, 24 hour fat burning system backed by science. That means this is not conjecture. It's not hearsay. It's not hype. These are 25 scientific studies showing that the formulation we've created actually helps you to burn more body fat even at night. So check that out. That is fatlocity.com or the best way to do it is just go to equa.life for all of these items and you'll be able to find them. Equa.life forward slash fatlocity uh, and just go to equa.life for the daily foundational protocol as well. While supplies last, uh, that means all this week actually. Yeah, so this is, this is unlimited. So this is not while supplies last, but it is. It does end on April 11th, okay? So this offer is good through April 11th. You can actually save 20% for life uh, by signing up for a subscription for Daily Foundation Protocol Level 2 or Level 3 or Fatlocity. Check it out over at equa.life. And of course, let us know if you have any questions.